Today we're going to talk about ION. It's this uh, decentralized identifier implementation. Uh, runs on Bitcoin, but importantly for this uh, discussion in this group is the fact that within uh, the implementation, the file transfer and replication protocol it relies on is IPFS. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that, how that works, as well as identity and ION in general. Um, maybe you want to get involved. So first question to, to answer is what is identity, right? <clears throat> so it's sort of a notoriously difficult thing to define, but I, I want to give a definition that I think should cover it all because it's because it's everything. Um, identity is everything around you, right? Like literally everything other than money, uh, probably you could you could argue, uh, in the sense that it's everything you say, do, think, experience, express your political views, your app data, like anything in the world that could define you as a person, is your identity. Um, so. It's, it's really, really important <clears throat> that we create a system that is both secure and decentralized because you know this is really like the story of your life, right? Um, so why is identity a must win fight? I, I would argue it is a must win fight uh, because if you define identity as the thing that grounds all of these activities, you know, your social media, you know, your communications with others, um, all of the stuff you type into to the digital sphere, which is like, you know, my grocery lists, my thoughts and feelings and documents, like this is incredibly sensitive data. And if we don't win the fight of identity, the thing that gates access to that data by outside parties and gives them the ability to read it or not, um, I think we, you know, we're in for like maybe not such a good future. So <clears throat> explaining the root of identity, right? What we're talking about today on is primarily the bottom of this tree. It's the, the foundation of identity. Um, not identity data. So one thing to really keep an understanding of in your mind is that identifiers are very different than identity, right? Identity is the sum total of you. Identifiers are references to all or part of you. Um, and so when we talk about what is an identifier, we've all used them, you know, email addresses, usernames, these are all identifiers, uh, but they're centralized. So people can take them from you, right? If they want to, if, you, if you're, you're acting naughty on a social media, um, website or naughty as they think you're acting, they'll take your account away. You lose all your connections, all the content that you had is gone, right? It's not really yours. They're leasing it to you. Same thing with email addresses. You can be erased. You can be depersoned. Um, now your identity data is all the stuff that actually defines you. Your identifier is just a reference point. So an identifier doesn't really tell a whole lot, right? I mean, maybe if you put your name as your email address, as most people do, it obviously tells something. But a big random identifier doesn't actually tell you about what it identifies. It could identify a person. It could identify machines. So without identity data, identifiers are just pseudonymous IDs backed by strong cryptography. And we'll talk a little bit about what decentralized identifiers specifically as a type of ID are. Decentralized identifiers is a W3C um, emerging standard that just went into candidate uh, recommendation uh, just two weeks ago. And it's gonna be an international standard. It's essentially sets forth a standard for a URI scheme and a data model for the expression of keys and endpoints in relation to an identifier. And what ION is, is a formulation of DIDs. It's a implementation of those standards. Over on the right, you'll see you know, one identifier, an ION identifier. It's not friendly looking, it's not like an email address. It's a 32-bit string, a 32-byte string, and it maps to this DID document, which is a docu a JSON document that contains some public keys that you might associate with your identifier and some service endpoints where people might be able to go find identity data. Um, and those are really the two most important things that link to a, a DID. Uh, the big difference here, obviously, is cryptographically secure, and these, these IDs are yours. They can't be taken from you. They have all the value of Bitcoin and all of those, those attributes in the sense that, you know, it, it's as hard to steal someone's well-secured Bitcoin keys or as it is their, their identity as it is their Bitcoin keys. So let's talk about ION. Uh, what is it? It's an open public permissionless layer two uh, network that runs on top of Bitcoin um, and enables one implementation of decentralized identifiers at Pretty, pretty awesome scale. So doesn't rely on any of the things that you may see in other protocols. There are no central authorities, you know, strange coming from Microsoft, obviously, uh, but there's no signatories, there's no cabal, it's not Libra, there's no, there's no CEO, right? Just like the CEO of Bitcoin is not, you know, been called in front of Congress, you're not going to find the CEO of ION uh, there soon either. 
so how does it work, right? <clears throat> this will get into a little bit about IPFS. So uh, in ion node, anyone can run them. Basically inside of an ion node uh, resides Bitcoin, um, some processing logic module, and uh, for this group, I, an IPFS node. Uh, every single ion node runs an IPFS node. Uh, we use Go IPFS. And what that actually allows for is all the nodes to ensure that they circulate all the specific data that they know they should have. And how do they know they should have the data? Well, they're watching Bitcoin for embedded IPFS CIDs that are uh, placed into transactions. And if those transactions you know, pass a certain set of deterministic rules, um, they ingest the CID and they start looking for that data. And essentially the system is a really, really big CRDT. Um, it's basically an authenticated CRDT that uses Bitcoin as a clock. And as it pulls all the data in from all the IPFS CIDs, the anchored batches of DID operations, uh, it compiles them in a deterministic manner that is not subjective in any way. It's formally and mathematically provable. Um, and there, there's no one that can stand in between you and that consensus because the consensus is, is purely math. So, um, so that's kind of the, the big role IPFS plays. And it's interesting in the sense that ion nodes do not speak to each other other than through IPFS. They, they watch each other's transactions in Bitcoin and they communicate over the IPFS protocol to make sure that they uh, circulate and replicate uh, the mirrored set of, of data that makes up ion. So what does ion deliver? Well, uh, like I said, it operates at massive scale, you know, tens of, or thousands or tens of thousands of operations per second. It's really efficient. People say, you know, they ask us all the time, especially folks that aren't really familiar with these sorts of technologies internally, well, but Bitcoin's so expensive. It's just so expensive for transactions. Well, maybe, right? I mean, if you were to write cat pictures into Bitcoin, you got to really care about that cat picture for $5 a pot. But if you're writing, you know, say 10,000 DID operations that are, can be embedded through one Bitcoin transaction, even if the price of Bitcoin went to $100 per transaction, I mean, that's one cent per operation. And an operation could, you know, be grounding the ID of, you know, Jeff Bezos's ID. You think he's willing to pay a penny? I do. I mean, they, they'll charge you, uh, you know, a dollar when you switch out your SIM card, right? It's all kind of bundled up in your contract. So for switching out a single SIM every few years, when you get a new phone, you could pay for all your ID ops, uh, probably for years at a time. So we think it's a pretty good deal. Um, Ion also includes a light node configuration so that you only need to actually have on hand at any moment as a light node about 5% of the total data set in the world. Uh, to give you a picture of how much data that would be for under two terabytes of storage, um, you could uh, anchor 50 billion, you could have 50 billion active DIDs in the PKI system. So basically onboarding the entire planet to Ion, we could, we could spin that at about 1.8 terabytes, which is pretty good. Um, Decentralized registry. So ION, unlike some other methods that are completely, where there's no index, right? Some other methods are, are essentially like you can call in to some specific prover module and figure out your IDs, keys, and endpoints if you know the ID, but you can't see all the ID strings. You can't see like, you know, ID one, two, three, four, five, six, all the other ones, right? Uh, ION is specifically enabling this um, through a decentralized index. So every ID that's anchored in ION, you could at least know uh, its ID and its keys and its endpoints. Now you don't know who it is, so it's not giving you a huge, you know, vector in terms of like actual identity data, but there's some really cool things you can do with that. One is uh, you can type IDs. So I could create IDs that have certain types that are, you know, digital things. They're, you know, types that span from people to machines, all sorts of things. And then you could basically parse the global substrate of IDs and, you know, get whatever batch of those IDs of whatever type you want and create your own registry for those things. We'll touch on that a little bit in a sec. So a little roadmap. Uh, we talked about you know, how ION's getting to V1. It's been a while. Um, we spent about a year just kind of thinking about how best to approach the space, um, did some just conceptual work. Uh, in 2019, we had a draft of the underlying protocol SideTree, which is blockchain agnostic. There's people running it on Ethereum as Element and, and others. Um, that's actually just been standardized by DIFF. Um, it is now an official DIFF ratified standard. Um, we got a beta running of ION, the specific implementation of SideTree anchored in Bitcoin in 2020. And we ran that beta for, for about the duration of 2020. Um, and now uh, in approximately, I'm don't hold me to it, but I, I think Thursday, um, we are going to V1 production, um, Microsoft GA with our node. And we can't speak for anyone else because obviously the protocol doesn't just hinge on us at all. Um, but we 
we are confident the spec is in good shape. The underlying protocol has been standardized and it's going to be rolled out just like any other uh, production service for us anyway. So, so the more information will be coming to you uh, in the coming days. And quarter, quarter four, 2021, you know, we want to integrate it certainly in all of our identity products uh, as a company. Um, you'll see auth modules coming out, people being able to log in with DIDs and, and all sorts of things um, that we think are just really cool um, and enabling for the community, the decentralized community in general. So what's next? Um, after DIDs, there's a, another place that IPFS can play a really, really big role. And I think some other folks you know, in, in the conversations to come will touch on this. Um, the next thing is personal data stores. So you know, what's an ID worth if you can't connect to some data and maybe ask for some stuff of someone's to learn about them or something they want you to hear about. Um, the concept here is that in those service endpoints that you can associate with your IDs, um, you might want like a personal data store endpoint where you can put some public data, maybe you could put some encrypted data and you know, maybe data that's encrypted for multiple parties, um, a whole mix of types of data. And for public data, you know, it might be something like Blue Sky, like maybe your tweets live in your, your, your personal data store. So that if I wanted to go get the tweet of say Bob, you know, his list of latest tweets, I would look his DID up, I would find his service endpoint and I would go to a standardized personal data store and ask for that type of object. Um, the ceramic folks are on later, they've done a, a really good job of this public data piece, especially. Um, and if I have that, I can, I can start building decentralized applications because I can actually go and get the data in a known universal way from my peers. And so there's a whole lot of power in that. And that's, that's I'd actually argue that's the, the most powerful thing about decentralized identities when you pair it with these data stores. So we, we believe that DIDs really are the DAP platform. There's no, decentralized identity itself was always the platform. I, I just think people are waking up to this um, now. Um, why do I need Signal and Telegram when I have DIDs with keys and standardized personal data store endpoints? I have an implicit universal worldwide encrypted messaging service that's a standard. Uh, it's a little bit better. I'd love to deprecate those companies. In fact, that's probably what we're gonna try and do. Um, social media, why do I need people telling me that I'm kicked off their platform when I have my own DID and that's what people follow and I don't need them in the middle and they're irrelevant. What, what about the gig economy? You know, If I'm in Austin, Texas and they say, well, you can't uh, operate here, Uber. Well, what if the way that drivers and passengers start talking to each other is through DIDs and personal data stores? It makes the interdiction barrier down to the person. And that's exactly where it should be so that they don't have as easy a time inflicting uh, roadblocks on people trying to exchange uh, in buying and selling of activities. So same thing about content registries. Um, the Apple App Store, really, what is a registry other than identifiers linking to things, right? We own NPM, um, Microsoft, and you know, heaven forbid something happened to that SQL database, right? That connects the world's code to identifiers that you type into your package.json. We think there could be a better world. We think that maybe you have DIDs that stand for your packages and you crawl ion and find them all. And you can have like a global registry of code that can't be, you know, hurt by anyone, even us, you know, the owners of NPM. So, so maybe I'm just going to posit to you that could it be that decentralized identity is actually that platform that people um, haven't been enamored with because it's not as sexy. It doesn't make you money. You can't ICO it. You can't shitcoin it. Um, you know, it doesn't just turn billions in your pocket overnight. Um, but it is real. It's serious. And some of the largest companies in the world are, are recognizing the value of it for their own reasons. Um, and I think you should maybe look into it too.